now it's time to chain fire freedom with Clover Tech Talk. Here's your host, Chris Dover. Welcome back, friends, to the Clover Tech Talk podcast. Today we're going to be discussing uh, reloading and more specifically reloading equipment as it pertains to those new reloaders or uh, those just now uh, just starting and getting into reloading but before we do that i'd like to uh, take a minute tell you guys uh, remind you about our website clovertack.com and there you will find all sorts of uh, cool things uh, including uh, uh, the blog post uh, called clovertack thoughts and that's where today's little podcast comes from uh, is an entry into that uh, that blog there. We also have uh, links to our various friends and affiliates and sponsors, uh, as well as a contact page there where you can uh, get with us and suggest future uh, podcast topics, uh, ask questions. Uh, maybe there's uh, some some video that you would like us to do, upload to YouTube. Uh, maybe a a manufacturer or dealer something along that lines we can interview in one of our live streams uh, and also uh, you can support us through uh, clovertech.com by uh, shopping any of our uh, affiliates or sponsors that are are linked there so back to the topic at hand and and that's reloading equipment um, I've been asked many many times over the years about um, different equipment and the question always starts out with you know what usually they ask what kit uh, what what uh, reloading kit would you advise uh, for those reloaders starting out and my answer is always the same I don't advise that you buy any of the reloading kits and my reasoning for that uh, comes from back when I first started to buy equipment um, I have, uh, have been around reloading my entire life pretty much uh, and for quite a few years before acquiring my own equipment uh, had uh, borrowed some equipment and things like that one Christmas I got a kit and quickly realized that um, the stuff in the kit for the most part is very basic it's very rudimentary um, it's not really stuff that you will utilize later on if you uh, stick with it uh, and especially if you get very serious about doing it so created uh, the uh, the list that's what uh, everybody calls it and have given this list out for for quite a few years now I go through and change some things and modify it every now and then as I've as I buy a new piece of equipment or as I find something that uh, is a little better fit or a little better deal and again you can uh, access this equipment list through uh, clovertech.com go to uh, clovertech thoughts and click on uh, clovertech thoughts on reloading equipment I'll throw a link to this down in the uh, in the show notes in the description down there for you uh, well, let's uh, let's burn through this list here pretty quick. It's a it's a pretty comprehensive list. It'll take us a little time to get through it, and uh, we'll start with the press. And the press that I recommend uh, is a press that's been on my reloading bench for years. And even though I have the Big Dylan Progressive Press, um, I still go back to this press, and that is the Lee Classic Cast four-hole turret press now this is the classic cast press they do make another version of this press the other version is typically a little bit cheaper uh, however uh, the stroke on the ram is shorter uh, on that new model press uh, and if you get into loading uh, uh, fairly large uh, cartridges uh, fairly large calibers 300 win mag weatherme mag um, possibly even 30-06, then you're going to have an issue. You're not going to have enough room in between the bottom of the ram uh, and the turret. <clears throat> so, uh, you want to definitely look at the classic 
cast four hole turret press and the thing with the turret press is uh it looks uh, uh similar to a single stage press with the exception of it has a turret in the top uh these turrets are interchangeable and they've got multiple holes in this case it is a four hole press therefore you can put four dies in the top of that uh, press and you can either rotate those by hand uh, which sort of slows the process down uh, but it makes it a little easier because you can set up uh, all of your dies in that head at one time uh, you can interchange those turrets and not have to worry about uh, moving dies setting up your dies for different calibers uh, and doing it over and over and over again um, it also has the perk of adding the auto indexing rod because it is an auto indexing press and what that means is you add this rod uh, in there to that attaches to the ram it goes up into the turret and with each stroke of the handle the turret will move over one hole what this is going to do is it's going to it's going to free you up time wise going to be a little quicker uh, so as you progress up and learn a little more uh, and get a little more comfortable you could actually use that auto indexing feature now very seldom do I <clears throat> use that auto indexing feature I typically turn my turret uh, by hand uh, it's just habit for me but that auto indexing feature is available on that press um, and obviously as I said before if you get that uh, press you're going to want to probably get some extra turrets if you're loading uh, multiple calibers now <clears throat> next the next item that you're gonna need uh, are gonna be shell holders uh, with your uh, with your different dies you've got uh, several options in reloading equipment and dies RCBS Lyman uh, Hornady uh, Lee the list goes on and on um, all of them except for the Lee. The Lee is going to be the only set of dies that come with a shell holder. Uh, if you buy any other ones, they likely will not come with a shell holder. Uh, however, Lee does make a shell holder set. I recommend that shell holder set. It comes with uh, all of your more common shell holders. Uh, the little case it comes in has a couple of extra slots in case you need to buy some oddball uh, shell holders you've got room there at the case you can go ahead and put those in there with the other ones uh, <clears throat> one thing to keep in mind when we're talking about brands uh, at shell holders uh, or really any piece of equipment across the board is going to be that in the reloading loading world uh, pardon me in the reloading world most all of your equipment uh, is going to be interchangeable. Uh, I can only think of a couple of examples offhand. You certainly want to double check things as you're buying equipment and whatnot. But uh, typically, your shell holders will work for uh, any brand. Your uh, dies will work across any brand, uh, that sort of thing. Now, as far as dies, there is uh, really three different dies that I use there's more brands out there uh, my number one go-to typically is the Hornady dies I like the way that the uh, it's got a bushing that uh, guides the uh, projectile in when you're in the uh, seating stage of reloading ammunition uh, I really like that I like the uh, adjustments and everything on those Hornady dies uh, and up until recently, if you bought a set of Hornady dies, this uh, deal may still be going on. I would have to check and see. Uh, Hornady uh, had a special where you could send in about five bucks, and get a free box of projectiles if you bought their dies. So it really made it worth buying those uh, those Hornady dies. Uh, my next favorite set of dies is going to be the RCBS AR series dies. Uh, this is a small base sizing die set small base meaning that uh, uh, unlike your traditional dies which are full length sizing die uh, these are small base meaning that they they size your uh, brass closer to the head of the brass uh, down at the base and 
what this uh, is designed for primarily the reason they're called AR series dies is for reloading those calibers that uh, you typically see on an AR-15 or an AR-10 uh, platform. Now, with that being said, I use these dies for my 308 bolt guns all the time. Uh, the ones, anyway, that I do not uh, neck size. Um, neck sizing, just so you know, and I do not have neck sizing on the list. That's a little bit more advanced uh, set of dies. Uh, but with neck sizing die, obviously you just size right at the top of the cartridge right there in the neck area. And finally, the third set of dies that uh, I use <clears throat> more because I have to rather than I like them are the Lee sets. And Lee's makes a pretty good product uh, across the board. We talked about the press obviously earlier, the shell holders. Uh, for the money, Lee does produce some pretty good stuff. Um, they just wouldn't be my pick unless, and this is the uh, exception and why I do have Lee dies. Lee makes quite a few oddball caliber dies that are special order uh, in any other brand. Uh, and considerably expensive because they're special order. So uh, maybe you've got an old firearm, uh, 3220, for example, comes to mind and some things like that. Then, uh, you probably are going to have to be looking at Lee dies. And a part of that die, uh, and I go to into this uh, on my YouTube channel, I actually have a uh, video dealing with uh, reloading dies. And I talk about the uh, die lock rings. And that's the uh, little ring that actually locks your uh, die to the press, or uh, in, in the case of the turret press, to the turret. And one thing that I like to do is I like to swap out my die lock rings for the RCBS style die lock rings. And you can buy just the RCBS rings. And the reason is because they're a little bit thinner and the way that they have the set screw positioned, uh, lock screw I should say, <coughs> positioned into that ring, it allows you a little more clearance if you're dealing with a multi-die setup like you would be in a turret press. Obviously you're going to be a little bit cramped for space having four dies in that turret press. And that little bit of extra clearance certainly helps when you're trying to uh, uh, tighten those up or loosen them or adjust them. Now the next uh, piece of equipment let's uh, let's talk about is, is going to be probably let's talk about the priming. Um, and there's a few things dealing with priming that I like to uh, uh, I like to recommend. Uh, the first is a Lee Universal decapping die or depriming die. What this is is a die that uh, really doesn't matter about caliper uh, caliber. I'm sorry, not caliper caliber. Um, really doesn't matter about caliber. You set it up to where the uh, decapping pin that runs through the center uh, is protruding through the bottom long enough. Uh, you run your cartridge up in it and it will deprime your cartridge. Now, uh, would you, uh, why would you want to do this? Well, uh, for me, I like to deprime all of my brass before it goes into the tumbler. It's just going to come out a lot cleaner that way. So that's how I prefer to do it. Now, it is uh, going to be pretty important if you buy one of these uh, universal decapping dies that you go ahead and buy some uh, of the extra decapping pins because inevitably you will break those pins and uh, you will need one. They're not very expensive, so there's no sense in not having one in a drawer uh, ready to go. Um, to go back in, put a primer back in, uh, I prefer the use of the uh, Lee Auto Prime XR. Uh, I've used many, many hand primers over the years, and I find that the, the Lee Auto Prime XR is one of the best as far as the way it's ergonomically designed. It uses uh, its own uh, shell holders that you have to buy separately. However, it makes changing those uh, shell holders out, it makes changing to a different caliber 
uh, extremely easy because of that. So if you look into the Lee Auto Prime XR, uh, you've got a couple options on the shell holders. You can look into the uh, set, uh, just like the shell holders for the press. Lee also makes a set of shell holders for the Auto Prime. Uh, or you can uh, buy those individually as needed as well. <coughs> if you are only using uh, or reloading rather for one or two calibers it doesn't make a lot of sense to buy the the entire set obviously now for when you uh, when you start to reload uh, one thing that you're going to want to do is make sure that you've got plenty of lubrication on those cartridges during the sizing process okay uh, when you run them up into the sizing die. And um, I use a two-part system uh, when I do that. Um, I like to use the uh, uh, Hornady one-shot uh, case lube. comes in a spray. And I will usually, after I clean my dies, uh, they're good and clean, usually before I put them up and then once again before I start reloading. And then even depending on how uh, many rounds I'm loading every now and then, I'll spray a shot of that uh, uh, orderly one-shot lube up in those just to keep the die itself uh, and the internals on it lubricated really well. Uh, I do not use that spray directly on the brass. I find that it, it tends to want to get sticky uh, and can create a problem. To eliminate the stickiness problem, uh, which I have not had in many, many years, uh, I use uh, Imperial Sizing Wax, and this is uh, comes in a little can. Uh, it is uh, literally a little waxy substance. You run your fingers across, you get some on your fingers. Uh, you spin the brass in between your fingers, and, and you're good to go. Uh, obviously, with any lube, once you're uh, done with all of that sizing, you need to make sure that you wipe those down or uh, run them back through a tumbler or something to, to get that lube off but um, I had an old timer uh, after I was uh, complaining about getting a case stuck in a die and he asked me uh, what I was using and he recommended that Imperial Sizing Wax now Imperial is a brand uh, that's the brand that I use I have seen the same sizing wax uh, in uh, branded by Hornady uh, and also branded by Redding uh, I have used those, uh, not personally, but uh, I have used them uh, uh, helping out some, some buddies and whatnot reload. And I honestly can't tell the difference. It may indeed be the same stuff in the little can. Um, the composition may be slightly different, but I think for the most part it's the same stuff. Now the next piece of equipment is, uh, is simply insurance, but it's something that is fairly reasonable and you're going to want to make sure you have this on hand just in case. Like I said, I have not had a stuck case in many years. Um, this one uh, gets used more for friends uh, and uh, acquaintances any more than, uh, than it does for myself. But that is a stuck case remover. Now, I use the Hornady stuck case remover. Uh, and it is basically, it's got a little uh, screw and a bushing fitting comes with a drill bit and a tap and you essentially drill through the uh, uh, primer hole and then you turn around and tap that uh, chuck everything up in a vise run the little screw and bushing through there and then you're able to tighten that up and it'll pull the stuck case out for you um, definitely if you have a stuck case remember that you also want to make sure that that die is good and clean once you get that case out and I've also got a video on my YouTube channel on the uh, stuck case remover there. Uh, there are a few other brands as well. They are pretty much all the same. I don't know that it really is imperative that you would get the Hornady kit. Um, <clears throat> if you do get one of those kits, make sure that you have a small uh, tap wrench. And that's the little piece that attaches to the end of the tap uh, wrench or a tap handle. Uh, make sure that you have that. <laughs> On, uh, another little tool just in case you mess up uh, might be that might be handy to have around is some type of a bullet puller. 
Uh, I recommend that uh, uh, Frankfurt Arsenal makes it, but uh, several others do too. Looks like a little hammer. It's got some little bushings. Uh, those bushings, the uh, case slides through that little bushing, and then uh, you screw it into a uh, what looks like a hammer. You smack that onto something solid a couple of times, and the uh, kinetic energy will pop that, that bullet out. Uh, they're, they're pretty safe because nothing is touching the primer during this time, the way that the bushings and all are designed. Uh, and in order to get uh, that primer to go off, it's going to have to be struck with a, a, pretty good, pr a pretty good lick with a, a firing pin. So uh, that Frankfurt Arsenal bullet puller, uh, I definitely, definitely recommend it. Um, as far as prepping your brass goes, um, there's all sorts of uh, advanced prep kits and things like that. Uh, pretty basic little tool you can start out with, and you'll go back and probably end up using it. I know I do. Uh, Lyman makes a little case prep tool. Uh, has your chamfer and deburr tool on it. Has your, uh, uh, your primer pocket cleaners and reamers on it. It's all one little tool. Uh, it's hand powered, of course, but uh, uh, it it does uh, does the job. It works well uh, for beginners, and like I said, you'll likely end up using that later on if you even if you do go to a full blown uh, prep center. Now, as far as cleaning your brass goes. Um, a lot of talk nowadays about a wet tumbler and stainless media and if you can afford that and you have time for that it's certainly certainly the way to go but we're talking mainly about the uh, new reloaders now and, and just getting into it frankfurt arsenal makes a kit comes with a vibratory tumbler uh, and a media separator you can also buy frankfurt arsenal uh, corn cob media uh, you could probably get the thing of media and the tumbler and the separator for under a hundred bucks if you're careful and uh the, the setup works great uh for beginners and you know being able to to quickly uh, clean your your brass there um now while you're reloading um there are blocks they call them reloading blocks and there's a ton of uh, different varieties and brands and things out there uh, some people use uh, Forster bits and they make their own reloading blocks and that's fine too. Uh, Lyman makes some called bleacher blocks and that's B-L-E-A-C-H-E-R as in like gymnasium bleacher. Uh, and the way these blocks are designed is they st have steps, they step up, they're not flat like your traditional loading blocks. And this makes uh, it a lot easier uh, to see your, or for me anyway, uh, to see your um, uh, your loads uh, to keep track of where you're at if you're charging cases with powder or uh, you know whatever the case may be uh, I like the way they're laid out they take up a lot less space on the bench uh, and those are are the uh, blocks of course that I recommend because of that uh, now as far as as charging your uh, cases go with powder uh, there's basically three types of equipment or pieces of equipment that you're probably going to need for that. Uh, the first is going to be a way to, to measure that powder. Uh, I prefer the little Hornady electronic, you know, digital scale. And uh, I do have a an automatic powder charger. I do have a set of beam scales. Uh, the little electronic Hornady scale, it can run off a battery, and I do run it off of a battery. Um just more than anything to help eliminate the possibility of inter any interference. Uh, things that plug into the wall, run on AC power, can be prone to electrical interference. So I do run my uh, my little scale off of a 9 volt battery and that battery gets low, I just change it and go about my business, but it lasts forever even on a cheap uh, you know, knockoff alkaline battery. So um, those are typically not too expensive you can find those horny scales you know 50 to maybe 75 dollar range uh, at the very most um, next you've got to have a way to uh, meter that powder out 
uh, as to how much you know uh, you meter your patter out onto or pour it out onto that scale. Uh, for that, I like the Lyman Easy Blow Powder Trickler. And the reason I like this is it's got a really long uh, auger, uh, I guess it would be, on it. Uh, so it gives, uh, it's it's pretty fast as far as trickling the powder. Um, it can be, uh, or slow, depending on how, how uh, quickly you turn the auger. Uh, but with that long auger, it can hold a lot of powder in the auger. It's more evenly distributed amongst the auger. Uh, and you don't have, you tend not to have uh, powder to clump in it, like happens sometimes with the, with a shorter auger. Uh, and then you've got to get that powder in the case. Obviously, for that, I use a Frankfurt Arsenal funnel set. It's a little bit pricey, but even starting out, I think it's worth it. Uh, it comes with a uh, just a standard, what looks like a standard funnel. Uh, and an extended drop tube. The cool thing about uh, poured powder and the extended drop tubes is the longer the tube is, the more consistently the powder will enter that case. Uh, it won't you know, necessarily stack up or, or pile up or, <clears throat> or pack down. And then also this Frankfurt Arsenal funnel set has little spouts uh, on the end that you put on the drop tube. And that drop tube uh, and they are uh, caliber specific so they fit on the neck of that cartridge really really well keep you from spilling powder or losing powder uh, that sort of thing and uh, then we've got your calipers and that's where I got the I get the word caliper with a P, C A L I P E R, and caliber, C A L I B E R, mixed up pretty regular. Uh, get tongue tied on those two when we're talking reloading, but I use a Lyman stainless dial caliper, is what I use. And I've also got a YouTube video on cali uh, calipers uh, where I look at my dial caliper and we look at a digital cal caliper, both of mine. Uh, I explain the differences between the two, my likes and dislikes, how to use both of them, that sort of thing. And if you can use a dial caliper, uh, it's typically going to be a lot more accurate um, than the digital. You don't have to worry about batteries and that sort of thing. And for measuring your bullet lengths, your overall cartridge lengths, um, your neck size, various things, Obviously, a, uh, a good set of calipers is, is a must. And I would definitely recommend not uh, going extremely cheap on these. I would not buy the uh, you know $4.99 set at Harbor Freight, for example. Uh, I, would, uh, I would get a decent quality set, uh, probably spend somewhere maybe in the $30 range at least. If you want an excellent set, uh, you can go with something like a, a Starrett brand or whatever, but you're going to pay considerably, considerably more for those. Uh, and uh, the Lyman's will, will get you by just fine. Uh, the last piece of equipment is not, not necessarily and not uh, uh, particularly something that a new reloader has to have, although it would certainly give you some peace of mind and that is a chronograph if you're not familiar with a chronograph that's the device you use to measure uh, your velocities okay you shoot your uh, projectiles uh, through it and it will tell you how fast those are going now that is important to me and i think that would be important to a uh, new reloader as well because of pressures uh, if you've got ammunition that's running uh, loaded really, really hot, uh, you've been given some bad load data, whatever, uh, you can kind of take into consideration with the recoil on the firearm uh, and looking at the velocity, you know, what velocity was your target velocity and how far off are you, that sort of thing. Uh, if you know how fast that projectile is going. Uh, if not, you kind of have to wing it uh, just going off of recoil. The other plus of having a chronograph is going to be for consistency. 
Yeah, you can fire 10 rounds if uh, you fire 10 rounds through the thing and uh, of, of a certain recipe that you have uh, reloaded your ammunition to. And you have a, a deviation across those 10 rounds of, let's say, 15 feet a second. Well, that's not too terrible. Uh, but, you know, on the flip, if you run it through and you've got a, uh, a deviation of, let's say, 215 feet per second, well, that's more than likely a problem. That's not really going to be a good recipe. You probably need to go back to the drawing board, adjust that recipe, maybe find a different powder, um, because that obviously is not going to be as accurate of a load uh, or be as tight of a group as what you're looking for. And the chronograph that I like to use, uh, and I had, uh, I've had some pretty expensive chronographs in the past, <clears throat> but I find myself going back to this one since I bought it, is the uh, Caldwell Precision Chronograph Kit. And it's not too terribly expensive. You can find them for under 150 bucks. Um, they come with the chronograph. They come with the sunshades. Uh, they come with a tripod. They come in a, ca a little uh, carry bag. And they also have a, an infrared light filter kit, and you could use these puppies at night. And I do, um, I do a lot of suppressed stuff and, and with thermal, so I'm out at night testing stuff a lot too. Uh, and I can really vouch for the how well this chronograph works at night. It's pretty awesome. You you uh, put the uh, the infrared uh, sunshades on there. Uh, it comes with a little kit. I think it's two or three AA batteries uh, power those up and turn those on and it, it makes no difference. So uh, if you're out in the country, uh, certainly you don't want to be uh, waking up your neighbors. But if you're uh, if you're shooting suppressed or, you know, far enough out in the country that it doesn't matter, then being able to do some things at night might be a benefit to you. Uh, and of course, it works during the day just as well as it works at night so there is the list guys um, I appreciate uh, you hanging around with me on this and uh, and walking through this list I hope that you've uh, maybe uh, I piqued your interest on a few things here uh, again would uh, invite you to check out clovertack.com I do have this list complete with links under the clovertack thoughts uh, section in that website uh, and with that said, that is all the time we have for this episode. Uh, we appreciate you giving us a listen today. And uh, we hope that everybody has a safe time until we get together on the next Clover Tag Talk. Bye, guys. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to check out some of our other videos. If you enjoy the channel, why not subscribe? If you want to passively support CloverTac, you can do so by going to CloverTac.com and shopping with one of our wonderful affiliate sponsors.